Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Alan Elman. I'm president of the Blue Collar Investor Corp. And on behalf of the Long Island Stock Investor Group and uh, Jim DeFranco, its president, welcome to tonight's webinar presentation titled Covered Call Writing Blue Chip Stocks to Create a Free Portfolio of Large Tech Companies. We're also going to add a few slides at the end, a brief discussion of cash secured puts. Uh, one of your members requested that I add those slides, so uh, we're happy to do that as well. Now, I'm here tonight with uh, two members of my team. Uh, Darius, uh, in the background, he, he's actually working on this from Australia, and he's recording tonight's webinar, and I'll be sending over to Jim uh, the recording for about 10 days. So for those of you who uh, didn't get to listen to the entire uh, presentation, I'd like to hear it again, or for members that didn't weren't able to get to the live uh, webinar, you'll have about 10 days to do that. So uh, Darius is uh, in the background recording. Also here with Barry Bergman, the managing director of the Blue Collar Investor. And uh, Barry will be answering any questions that you have in real time. If you take a look at the bottom of the screen, there's a chat box for Q&A. And uh, you know, he'll be doing the best he can because Barry just had a shoulder replacement. So his typing is a little slower than usual, but he's a trooper. So uh, more than likely he'll get to your, your answers, but if he doesn't, or if you think of a question later on, you can contact either myself or Barry at the email addresses you see at the bottom of the screen, alan at thebluecollarinvestor.com or barry at thebluecollarinvestor.com. So uh, for those of you that might be going through library withdrawal, uh, this is where I was supposed to be tonight, like uh, right over here, okay? And uh, the coronavirus situation took that out of play. And uh, Jim DeFranco and myself were able to figure out a game plan, plan B, if you will, which is what we're doing tonight, where we continue to uh, get you the information and you could do it from the safety of your home. And there's uh, Jim at the bottom of the screen over there. So. I want to thank Jim for working with me uh, so that we can get you the information. This is a uh, webinar that I wrote specifically for this group. Uh, it's a brand new one. I've been speaking at your club now for about 10 years, and I always try to come up with a different presentation. So tonight we're going to go over the basics of options and covered call writing, and then how to develop a portfolio of these very expensive large cap tech companies without taking any money out of your savings account by generating cash from selling options. So uh, that's uh, basically it. Now, for years and years and years, Jim has started off all his presentations with a uh, market consensus. And uh, he was good enough to send some bullet points, which I have uh, created in a few slides here. So you're not gonna miss out on that. So let me just read through them. And then I have a few slides of my own on the current state of the market, which I'm sure uh, everybody is, is very concerned in, in, about and interested in. Uh, we're going through uh, an aberration right now with this coronavirus situation where fear and panic has basically taken over. So this is uh, Jim's take on the market, the first uh, couple of um, slides here. And uh, the S&P 500 is still holding above the long-term trend which started back, uh, bull market started back in March of 2009. So it was still above that. Uh, and the 50 day uh, moving average is still above the 200 day moving average for both the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So those are both positives. Now the 50 day moving average moved above the 200 day moving average, which is uh, a bullish signal called the Golden Cross on April 1st of 19. Um, we haven't gotten the death cross, which is the opposite, where the 50-day moves below the 200-day. Uh, and of course, we're all hopeful that that will not occur. Now, the CBOE volatility index is suggesting a high-risk environment. Um, I'll just add this, that uh, generally speaking, the VIX, uh, which is the volatility index, is inversely related to the performance of the overall market. And so generally speaking, the lower it is, the more bullish it is, and right now it's popped up to 51%. Uh, 
Uh, Jim says that a spike up to 60 to 75 would indicate a short-term oversold, which you know kind of indicates that things would reverse. So I'm adding some of my own comments in here. I hope that's okay with you, Jim. Now, the percentage of New York Stock Exchange stocks above the 200-day moving average is about 20%. And uh, if it reaches 5 to 10%, Jim says that's extremely oversold. And the stockcharts.com symbol for that is what you see here, the dollar sign NYA 200R. Continuing along with Jim's notes, the percentage of New York Stock Exchange stocks above the 50-day moving average is about 8%, which is very oversold. A stockcharts.com symbol for that is dollar sign NYA 50R. It was as high as 90% in March of 2019. Now, the New York Stock Exchange bullish percent index is about 16%, and the symbol is dollar sign BPNYA. This is oversold. The advanced decline line is bearish and looking for a bullish signal. The symbol is T2100 in freestockcharts.com. So Jim is referencing two different uh, software programs for charts. One is stockcharts.com and one is freestockcharts.com. The S&P 500 and the Dow Jones 30 weekly MACD, moving average convergence divergence, is bearish. So that's a uh, momentum indicator and it's giving off a bearish signal. And the uh, RSI is below 50, which is also bearish. Uh, Jim says, look for an upswing crossing above 20. Remember the warning symbol it gave last month. Continuing Jim's comments for market consensus. The support area and price projections, all support areas that Jim mentioned in the last meeting were violated, except the one that he alluded to before where um, from March 2000, I believe uh, he meant 2009, I probably typed that in wrong, uh, for the S&P, 2600 for the S&P uh, 500. I've said for you, years that this is the mother of all supports. Jim, if I'm wrong about the date, uh, maybe you could just send out an email to your, uh, to your members on that. Um, measuring the upward movement, uh, the S&P 500 has to close above the March 3rd high of 3136, Ooh, the good old days, to have any meaningful advance. And finally, Jim wants to remind you that the next meeting is April 7th. David Sharrick is from uh, pre presenting the School of Hard Stocks. Okay, uh, I've added a couple of slides to um, market update, which, uh, which I share with my members on our weekly report. So let me add those in. And of course, um, let me just say that nobody really knows, you know, what the market is going to do for sure in the short term. But certainly there are certain things that we could use that will throw the odds in our, in our favor. So let me state the obvious first, that the virus is really causing the market to react in an emotional manner. So uh, a lot of the fundamental and technical reasons why we may buy and sell are kind of thrown out the window as fear and panic takes over. So uh, that, that's number one. That's pretty obvious to everybody. So here are the concerns. Now, uh, of course, there are concerns about a global recession. That just means that people are spending less. We've seen that with airlines, and I'm a perfect example of that. I was supposed to fly up from Florida to New York, uh, and I didn't. And that includes staying at hotels, car rentals, restaurants. We've seen a bevy of event cancellations. Uh, I just heard that the, uh, the basketball tournament is not going to have any fans in the, in the arenas. So all that creates less spending. Now, another concern, treasury yields, which is a good and a bad, but the concern is, is that with the yields under 1%, now yesterday or today, the 30 year popped over one, two days ago was also under one. Uh, this creates the potential for what's known as an inverted yield curve, where the short term rates are higher than the long term rates. And that's an issue for banks. And you know, the Fed wants to make sure the banks can operate normally. So what they've been doing is they had that 50 basis point, point rate cut uh, recently. Uh, to bring the short-term rates down, and um, and I, I wouldn't be shocked to see uh, another rate cut next week of 
maybe up to another 50 basis points. We'll see. But uh, that's what that's the reason why they want to make the uh, want to prevent an inverted yield curve. Now, a lot of people feel that an inverted yield curve portends a recession. Uh, and in many cases, it did in the past, but historically, it took about 15 months to do so. So if we do see the inverted real, uh, yield curve and it does result in a recession, which may or may not happen, usually it takes a bit of time. It won't happen like the next day. And of course, uh, another concern is that, you know, as the Fed continues to lower rates, eventually it's going to run out of tools to mitigate these issues. So uh, I created this chart here to show you the 10-year uh, and two-year Treasury yield. And on the red arrow, this was made Monday, so it might be slightly different today. Uh, the difference was only 0.25%. So there's really very little room for banks to make money. And um, you could see the long-term average on the top there was 0.93%, so way higher. So this is uh, you know, one of the concerns that the Fed is, uh, is worried about and one of the reasons why I expect and a lot of others economists expect another rate cut next week. All right, can we find any good news? Is there any silver lining in the clouds? I think there is. Of course, everybody's very worried about lower oil prices. Um, and of course, it does affect the oil companies in a big way when prices drop recently from 50 to $30 a barrel. Um, but energy actually, in reality, only represents 3% of the S&P 500. Uh, alternative energy is uh, taking the place of a lot of the traditional energy companies. And of course, uh, as, as oil prices go down, so do gas prices, and that puts more money in our pockets. So there is a positive to the decreasing prices in oil. Low interest rates as well, which is good for housing, and it's cheaper for people to buy homes even refinance, and of course, for consumer spending when money is cheaper. So there is a big positive. Now, where are people gonna put money? Well, interest rates in, in parts of Europe, like Germany, for example, are negative. You gotta literally pay them to put money in their banks. So uh, the United States is still uh, the place for money to flow in. And uh, a big deal, in my opinion, is that the dividend yield for the S&P 500 is much greater than that of the 30-year treasury. That's very, very rare and very good news for the stock market. So uh, once this fear and panic subsides and the market fundamentals are looked at based, you know, based on what really exists rather than the emotion that's in the market right now, I think, uh, in, in my humble opinion, uh, one man's opinion, I think we're in for a nice ride back up again. And finally, where else can we make money? <laughs> no, nowhere else. And just keep in mind that dividend yield of the S&P 500 is greater than the 30-year treasury. In my view, that's a big deal. So what do you look for when the market goes down as much as it has? Well, we look for a bottom. And, uh, you know, we look at technical charts. I'll show you one that I made up yesterday. And we, how do you know it's a bottom? Well, it, it's a bottom when the, the market goes down, hits a certain point, comes back up again goes back down, hits a certain point, and comes back up again. So uh, Monday, a new bottom was established. We had a terrible day on Monday. We had a terrible day today. Uh, so you want to retest those lows, and you want to watch the volume, uh, because on the down days, you want to see volume declining. That is a good sign that a bottom is being uh, set. So uh, finally, uh, I created this slide of the S&P 500, and Number one, the blue line there is the 50-day simple moving average, and uh, number two is the 200-day uh, moving average. Uh, just for clarity, with my short-term option selling, I use 20-day and 100-day exponential moving averages because I'm doing uh, short-term uh, trades. <clears throat> but for longer-term trades, like just buying stocks, 50 and 200-day are pretty much uh, what uh, most investors use. So you could see the green circles on the right where the market dipped for under first the 50 day and then, uh, then later on the 200 day. So what you wanna do is you wanna see where the blue line is at the bottom, uh, you wanna see the market bouncing off that blue line on low volume. So the volume bars right now are pretty high and you wanna see that drying out. So as it tests and retests, if it keeps bouncing off but on lower and lower volume, 
that is a very good sign, no guarantee, but a very, very good sign that the market is about to turn around. And uh, you know, you could speak with Jim uh, either via email or at the next meeting to see if um, he agrees with that assessment. But I just wanted to give you um, my, my view of what I'm looking for regarding a turnaround in the market. Now, uh, just as one more aside, and, and all the members of the Blue Collar Investor uh, are aware of this, um, I've been purchasing uh, products known as inverse ETFs. So these are exchange traded funds that go up when the market goes down. So on a day like Monday or a day like today, my portfolio actually uh, went up significantly. So uh, there, there are products that you could buy in confirmed bear markets that will benefit from a uh, market going down. But as far as when it'll turn around, uh, you know, I think uh, looking for a bottom on low selling pressure volume is uh, one of the things you should consider. Okay, uh, so much for market assessment. Uh, let's start off with a preview example of covered call writing. Uh, and this is the strategy that I've been using now for well over two decades. It's my go-to strategy. Uh, it's the strategy where I've had the greatest success. Uh, and it's pretty much uh, what I'm known for. Uh, but I also do put selling. And we're gonna use this strategy. We could use it in many, many different ways of investing. And tonight we're gonna to use it to set up a free portfolio of large cap tech companies. Let's start with a, a basic example of covered call writing. So we're gonna purchase 100 shares of stock. For every one options contract we sell, we must first own 100 shares of the underlying security. So one options contract equals 100 shares. So if we buy 100 shares of company XYZ at 48, our investment or cost basis is then $4,800. Once we own these shares and we are in a protected or covered position, we are now free to sell the option. So buy the stock first, then sell the option. So if we sold the $50 option, agreeing to sell our shares for $50 at any time over the next one month, that is, the, that is a covered call position. Buy a stock and sell the option. Now, for undertaking this obligation, we are paid a cash premium. As soon as we click our computer to sell that option, the cash is in our account. So a typical premium would be $1.50 or 150 for the 100 shares. Now, a $150 initial profit, initial, on a cost basis of $4,800 represents a 3.1% one month return, 37% annualized. Of course, we don't know the final status of the trade until the end of the contract. It could be more, it could be less, but that's, where, that's our starting point, through, uh, uh, an initial 3.1% one month return. Now at the end of the contract, there are two possible major outcomes. Let's assume for a moment the price of the stock remains less than $50. Let's say it stays at 48. Well, the buyer of that option, not us, we're the sellers. The buyer of the option is not gonna exercise the option and buy our shares for 50 if they're trading at market at a cheaper price. So the option expires worthless, we keep the shares and we still keep the $150. So that represents a 3.1% one month profit and now we could sell another option the following contract month. Keep in mind that option contracts expire on the third Friday of the month, 4 p.m. Eastern time. So option contract months are not the same as calendar months. Let me repeat that. Option contracts expire the third Friday of the month, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Now in the second major outcome, the price of the stock moves higher than the $50 uh, agreed upon sales price, that's called the strike price. Now, if we take no action to buy back that option, our shares will be sold on the Saturday after expiration Friday. And they'll be sold for $50, the strike price, the agreed upon sales price. Now, if that happens, we've now made an additional $200. We bought at 48, we sold at 50, and we had 100 shares. So our total profit is 350, 
which represents a 7.3% one month return, 87% annualized. Now let me stop and state the obvious. You're not going to get this kind of return on every position in your portfolio every month of the year. However, in normal and bull market environments, you will always get a few of these. So you have to know how and when to use certain types of options. The kind of option I used in this preview example, higher than the current market value, as you'll see in a moment, is called an out of the money strike. And we'll get into definitions in just a moment. Matter of fact, right now. So we don't have a lot of definitions, ladies and gentlemen, but we do have a couple. So let's go through those to build our foundation before we get into the strategy of making money. Let's start off with the very basics. What is an option? Well, an option is a made up thing. It's a contract that gives the buyer of the option the right but not the obligation to either buy or sell 100 shares of stock at a fixed price known as the strike price, and that was $50 in the preview example, and by a specified date, which is known as the expiration date, the third Friday of the month, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Now, a call option, which is what I'll be talking about in the first part of this presentation, is an option that gives the buyer the right to buy 100 shares of stock at the strike price. So when we sell a covered call, we are selling some unknown person the right, but not the obligation, to buy our shares from us at the strike price by the expiration date. In return, we receive a cash premium. A put option gives the buyer the right to sell 100 shares of stock at the strike price. So when we sell a put option, we are selling someone the right to sell their shares to us. And we'll go over selling care secured puts in the last few slides of tonight's webinar. We have a couple of more definitions. The strike price as it relates to the stock price, and this is very important. So the different strike prices are at the money, in the money, and out of the money. Let's start with at the money. That's where the strike price of the call option is the same as the current market value of the stock. So if we bought a stock for $30 and sold the $30 call option, that's called at the money. Now, if the difference between the current market value and the strike price is small, like pennies, then the strike is called near the money. So near the money and at the money are pretty much the same. Now an in the money strike, and this is the one that very, very few covered call writers ever use. And uh, if you could learn to use the in the money strike in certain market environments, like the one we have right now, it's gonna put cash in your pocket. And <clears throat> we'll break it down in the next slide, but that's where the strike price, the price we agree to sell our shares for, is actually lower than the current market value of the stock. And in the next uh, slide, I'm gonna show you a stock that we bought at 56 and then sold the $50 call option. So right off the bat, we're losing six bucks on the sale of the stock. So I'll show you how that breaks down on the next slide. Now, the most popular of all the strike prices by far is the out of the money strike. And that's the one I used in the preview example where we bought the stock at 48 and agreed to sell it for 50. The reason this is so popular is because we have an opportunity to generate two income streams on the same trade with the same stock with the same cash investment. One on the option premium, which is generated into our account immediately. And second, if the price of the stock moves up from current market value, in the case of the preview example, 48, up to the strike price in the preview example that was 50. So two income streams become a possibility only with the out of the money strike. And that's why it's such a popular strike price. You should be using it in most normal and bull market environments. But in a bear or volatile market, you might want to lean to the in the money strike. Okay, so we have two more definitions here, and we're going to talk a little bit about the in the money strike here. And if you look at the equation on the bottom of the screenshot, the total premium consists of intrinsic value plus time value. Now, uh, intrinsic value applies only to in the money strikes. All right, so if you sell an at the money strike, buy a stock at 30 and agree to sell it for 30, or if you sell an out of the money strike, buy a stock at 48 and agree to sell it for 50, 
There is no intrinsic value component. It's all time value. But if we sell a stock, if we buy a stock at 56 and sell the 50 call, that's an in the money strike. It's lower than current market value. So let's assume for a moment that we capture a premium of $8 when we sell that option. Is that $8 all profit? No, it's not, because we're going to lose $6 on the sale of the stock. That $6 is known as intrinsic value. It's the amount that the strike price, 50, is lower than current market value, 56. So we must deduct that $6 from the $8, leaving us a time value, real initial profit of $2. Now, for those of you that feel mathematically challenged, oh my God, I have to start subtracting this and that, I got some good news for you. I've created a calculator, it's become known as the Elman Calculator. Many of you probably already have it, but for those of you who don't, I'm gonna let you know at the end of the webinar how you can all get a free copy of the basic Elman Calculator and it'll do all the math for you. The takeaway here is, when we sell an in the money strike, we must deduct the intrinsic value from the premium to get our actual time value profit. We don't want to exaggerate the profits that we're receiving when we sell an in the money covered call. So let's uh, summarize the three terms covered call writing. Covered means that we buy the stock first. Okay, that's the order, buy the stock first, then sell the option. Can be done in one step on certain broker platforms, but this is known as legging in, where you buy the stock first and then sell the option. This is really how you, you should learn it. So we're covered, and another word for covered would be protected because we know our cost basis, right? We know in the preview example that we spent $48 on a stock that we're willing to sell for $50. If we don't buy the stock first and just sell the option, that's called naked option selling. It's very risky, and most brokers won't allow us retail investors to do that because it is so risky. But because we're covered, it becomes a low risk strategy that our government allows us to use even in self-directed IRA accounts. Now call, the second uh, word in the term covered call writing is the type of option we're selling. We're selling the right but not the obligation to buy our shares at a price that we determine by a date that we determine. And writing means we're initiating the trade. On our brokerage uh, trade form, it'll say STO or sell to open. We're initiating the trade by selling the call option. And that's what those three words mean. So when we're selling covered calls, we must first own 100 shares of stock in order to sell one contract. If we wanted to sell five contracts, we must own 500 shares. If we own 480 shares of Home Depot and we wanted to sell five contracts, we would first have to purchase 20 more shares, then we're good to go. Okay, so that's the basic foundation for covered call writing. Now let's move it into our strategy goals now for uh, relating this to uh, buying a portfolio of large cap tech companies by writing covered calls on blue chip stocks. And specifically, we're gonna look at the Dow 30 stocks. So the actual stocks in our portfolio are gonna be Dow 30 blue chip stocks. We're gonna write covered calls on those, and we're gonna use the cash generated from selling those calls to purchase shares of QQQ Trust, which trades on the NASDAQ exchange under the ticker symbol QQQ, all right? And we're gonna do this every month. Now the Qs represent 100 of the largest non-financial companies that trade on the NASDAQ exchange. In essence, technology companies. You'll see in just a moment the kind of companies that I'm talking about. So when you own one share of the Qs, you're in essence owning 100 shares of tech companies. And that's how we can enter and have a a presence of those large cap expensive stocks in our portfolio at a very low cost. And we're gonna pay for it by selling options on blue chip companies taken from the Dow uh, 30. And we're gonna do this every month. We're gonna sell one month options. So by repeating this every month, we're gonna have a very 
solid dollar cost averaging strategy. So if the price of the Qs should go way up, as it did earlier this year, we'll be buying less shares. But when it goes way down, like it has in the last 10 days, then we're going to be buying more shares of the Qs. So in essence, we're going to be dollar cost averaging into the Qs or into these large cap tech companies. Very sound financial strategy. So let me show you now how uh, we select which Dow 30 stocks uh, to use. And I'm showing you a copy of the blue chip report that uh, we give to our blue collar investor premium members. This particular report comes out once a month. We have a uh, standard stock report and exchange traded fund report that comes out once a week. So there's a total of three reports. But the blue chip report for the Dow 30 comes out once a month and we publish it before the new contracts uh, expire. So I want you to see, first of all, the two time frames, which are these red arrows over here, uh, that we look at. So we're looking at a three month price performance and a one year price performance. So near term and longer term. And we first uh, take a look at what is the S&P 500 done in these two time frames here. So you see that in the last three months, this is taken from the October contracts of 2019. Uh, you could see that at that point in time, the S&P 500 had been up 4% in the last three months and in the last year. So those were the two uh, time frames for the S&P. Now, all the stocks that were eligible that particular contract month, you could see the two columns here, uh, outperformed. So if we would take, let's say, uh, Home Depot, for example, it was up 12% in the last three months as of that date which was triple that of the S&P 500, and up 11% in the last one year, which was almost triple that of the S&P 500. In other words, the stocks that are eligible from this particular list in this particular report have outperformed the S&P 500 in both the last three months and in the last year, near term and longer term. So uh, it, it's showing strength in both time frames. Now, the report also has certain dates that are significant when we're trading. We should know about these. And you can see where the blue arrows are now. We're going to look at an earnings report date, and we're going to look at an ex-dividend date. So uh, the earnings report dates, as those of you who are members of the Blue Collar Investor know, we never write a covered call or even sell a care-secured put if there's an upcoming earnings report. It's too risky. Um, there are ways of circumnavigating around that. We could use weekly options, but we don't want to have an option in place when there's an upcoming earnings report. So the report gives the earnings report dates. Uh, and the, as far as the ex-dividend date is concerned, uh, for me, it doesn't matter. But for some people that may own uh, blue chip stocks in a long-term buy and hold portfolio that may be of a very low cost basis and you don't want those shares taken away from you, uh, because it might create some negative tax issues. Um, you should avoid the ex-dividend date because that's the most likely reason for early exercise of the option. Some retail investor who doesn't really understand the relationship between uh, dividends and uh, options may exercise the option to capture the dividend. It never makes good sense to do it, but once in a blue moon, it'll happen. So if you want to make sure that it doesn't, uh, then you should avoid the ex-dividend dates. So um, these are the two important dates you need to do. Um, you either avoid the stock uh, that's coming out with an earnings report or own the stock through the report, but don't cap it with a, a call option. Let the report pass and then write the call option after the report passes. A very reliable resource, uh, not 100% accurate, but best I've come across for earnings report dates is earningswhispers.com. Now, ex-dividend dates is the main reason, as I said, for early exercise. If it happens, I'll tell you exactly when it'll happen, the day before the X date. So if you're going to get early exercise because of a dividend, it'll happen the day before the X date. Now, keep in mind that the X date is different than the pay date. So the X date is the date that you must own the shares in order to be eligible to capture that dividend. 
So it's earlier than the payday. Uh, and it's an issue, uh, it's not an issue if you're trading in, in sheltered accounts because you're not worried about taxes. But if you are, it could be. And so that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. A reliable site for ex-dividend dates is dividendinvestor.com. So let's go back and, and uh, redefine what the Qs are. They're an exchange traded fund. So an exchange traded fund is like a mutual fund, but it trades like a stock. So you can buy and sell it during the course of the day. And many of them have options associated with them. And certainly the Qs, which is the ETF that I've used the most over the last two plus decades, uh, is certainly one It's very, very popular. There are tons and tons of options. It's a very liquid option. And, uh, and so the bid ask spreads are very narrow. Um, but you know, there are times when it's underperforming. So uh, that's why we dollar cost average into it by doing this every month. Now, it consists of 100 of the largest non-financial companies that trade on the NASDAQ exchange. You'll know the names when I show you them in just a moment. And these are basically technology companies. So using the Qs, uh, is a low cost way to maintain a portfolio of these really expensive large cap tech companies. So as of last week, I don't know, it probably hasn't changed. These are the top 10 holdings within the queues, which represents 54% of the queues. And you can see uh, expensive companies like Apple and Microsoft and Amazon and Google, Facebook, uh, and then, of course, there are some less expensive companies like you see on the bottom there, Intel and Cisco. Um, you know, but a, a lot of them are very expensive, which makes it difficult for retail investors to maintain a large portfolio of these. However, uh, by using the queues, we can have a presence of these companies without spending a lot of money. And then by buying them via selling call options on blue chip stocks, we don't even have to break into our savings account to do so. So here are the, uh, some pricing that I did. Um, I think I did it either, I think I did this yesterday. So it, these probably have gone down a little bit. I might have done it Monday, but in any case, you're in the ballpark here. You could see companies like uh, Microsoft 150, Amazon 1800, uh, Google 1215, Netflix 346, and then some are cheaper like Cisco and Intel. But basically, they're very expensive. So you could see the advantage of owning the Qs and having all of them, all of these plus a lot more uh, in your portfolio for the price of one share. Now, when we do standard uh, stock selection uh, for covered call writing, we do it a little bit differently than just limiting ourselves to the Dow 30. So let me just take digress a little bit and just review that just to make sure that you understand that we're using covered call writing for tonight's webinar in a very, very specific way. But generally speaking, we do a fundamental analysis, which is sales and earnings growth. Uh, I use certain IBD screens and you could use a screen known as finviz.com. All this information is in my books and DVDs and beyond the scope of this webinar. Uh, but I just want you to know that, uh, that you can, make more money with covered call writing using uh, more growth companies than blue chip companies. Uh, but we're using a very specific strategy now uh, with blue chip stocks and, and the Qs. We use technical analysis. Uh, Jim is very big on technical analysis and so am I as one of the components in our screening process to identify trend and momentum. And uh, you know, in my material, I tell you which parameters I use uh, if you want to see how I set up a technical chart, just send me a Barry an email and I'll send you a screenshot of how I set up a technical chart for short-term option selling. And then we also screen with our common sense principles like minimum trading volume, diversification, avoiding earnings reports and things along those lines. So it's a three-pronged screening process for uh, stock selection uh, when we're doing it in the traditional way. Okay, let's get down now to a step-by-step -step process of how to do this. Specifically, selling covered calls, uh, looking to generate between 1% to 2% a month with these out-of-the-money call options on blue chip stocks, and then using the cash generated from the sale of these options to purchase 
shares of the Qs on a dollar cost averaging basis. Now, what I did was I actually, in order to show you that real life trading, I actually took 220,000 of my own cash and put it into a portfolio and created some trades. So you'll actually see some screenshots of the trades I executed with the actual cash that was executed when I did this. So um, the, the hypothetical here is a $220,000 portfolio, but of course it could be less and it could be more. You know, you have to tweak it to what you know, fits your particular uh, cash availability and how much you want to put into this. But I use this figure 220,000. We're gonna sell one month out of the money call option, so higher than current market value. That's gonna give us an opportunity, as I showed you in the preview example, that you had to generate both option premium and an opportunity for share appreciation. But what we wanna make sure that the initial time value goal range when we sell those options is between one to 2%. I mean, we want it to be worth our while to do this. So, you know, if you were to annualize that, you know, it would be 12 to 24% a year, which looks darn good compared to, you know, what CDs and treasuries and money markets are nowadays. So that's our, that's our goal uh, for that particular range. We're going to use the Elman calculator to get all that figured out for us. Now, we're going to take the cash generated from the sale of these call options on the blue chip stocks, and we're going to purchase shares of the Qs. And we do it the same time every month as we start the new contracts, the first week of the new contracts, the Monday or Tuesday after expiration Friday, and that's how we dollar cost average because it's gonna be once a month. We're not putting all this money in to the same price of the queues at the same time. We must also keep a cash reserve on the side. Now, position management is beyond the scope of tonight's webinar. It's very, very important for any aspect of option selling, uh, cover call writing or selling puts. Uh, you know, how do you manage your trades? And that's a big part of, the, of what's in my material. Uh, but uh, frequently, we'll need to buy back the option to either mitigate losses or to make even more money than what you're going to be seeing in the upcoming screenshots. So you need to have some cash on the sidelines, and it should be somewhere between 2 and 4% to buy back your option. So you're not using the entire 220000 or whatever the amount that you're using, you, know, you have to put a little bit of the cash on the side to, uh, to do that. All right, so here's a real life portfolio that I created uh, for the October 2019 contracts. Now you could see uh, the stocks that um, were eligible were the ones that were beating the S&P 500 at that point in time in both the three month and one year timeframes. So the second column is the price of the stock at that point in time. And the strike prices that we use, you see we're all out of the money. Okay, so for example, Intel down here was trading at 5072, and we're gonna look at a strike higher than current market value, 5250. So they're all out of the money, which means that there's no intrinsic value, and they all had upside potential because we're selling out of the money strikes. Like the preview example, that's the one that you have an opportunity to make two income streams, one from option premium and the other from share appreciation from current market value up to the strike price. So in the example for Intel down here, 5072, the option premium was $1.15. Well, that represented a 2.3% one month initial time value return. But we also have the opportunity for the stock to go from 5072 up to the strike price, which represented another additional 3.5% one month return. So for that particular position, there was an opportunity for a 5.8% one month return. Now, so when this was set up, uh, and by the way, the information we put in the blue cells of the Elman calculator, and then the white cells become populated. So RU is the initial time value return, a return on the option, upside potential, uh, price moving from current market value up to the strike. Downside protection would only apply to in the money strikes, which we didn't use. We're not using in this particular strategy. But if we did use an in the money strike, the downside protection would be represented 
by the intrinsic value component. Okay, so when we averaged out all of the uh, roof figures on, in the yellow column, it came to an average of 1.5%, which is right within our 1% to 2% initial time value return goal. Perfect. Now, we also have an opportunity here for another 2.4%. That was the average of the brown uh, column. So if you average everything out, we have an opportunity for 3.9% one month return for the entire portfolio. Of course, that's in an ideal world, which never happens. But you can get an idea of what the opportunities are. And even if it's just 1.5% for one month, still 18% annualized for the year. And by the way, as you're looking at this, let me just state the reason why we should all beat the market every single year when we sell covered calls. And it's very simple. And that is when we sell an option, we are lowering our cost basis, pure and simple. We're lowering our cost basis. So in that preview example, when we bought a stock at 48 and sold the 50 call for $1.50, our break even is 46.50, not 48. And that's the reason why. Now it's true with capping the upside, but over the long haul and studies have shown this, you are going to beat the market on a consistent basis with covered call writing. As long as you have mastered the three required skills, number one, stock selection, number two, option selection, number three, position management. Okay, folks, the $220,000 that I put into this portfolio, uh, I'm gonna show you now uh, what the broker, uh, brokerage account looked like. So, you know, sell to open. I told you uh, that's how you, you know, you're uh, writing the covered call, you're initiating the trade and uh, two contracts. So the, uh, the, the stocks that were uh, cheaper, you know, more contracts, stocks that were more expensive, less contracts. I try to allocate the cash equally uh, as possible. They'll never be precise. But if you're wondering why some are one, some are two, some are four, some are three, uh, that's because it's based on the price of the stock. So I try to allocate an equivalent amount of cash to each position. The second from the right column shows you the premium that I generated when I sold those options. So uh, for JP Morgan, $1.62. Uh, here is uh, Visa, $2.80. And uh, then finally, the far right column shows you the actual cash that was generated. Uh, after uh, commissions were taken out. Now, I'm sure you're all aware that there's no longer any trading commissions for stocks themselves, but for options, uh, they're anywhere from 50 cents to 75 cents a contract, which is very, very low, almost insignificant. And uh, the brokerage form um, you see me using here uh, charges 75 cents for one contract, and then if you're using multiple contracts, it drops down to uh, 50 cents a contract. So you shouldn't be paying more than that, uh, 75 cents down to 50 cents a contract. So you could see here in this column, that's how much cash that was generated. So let's look at our transaction results now. Um, the cost of the shares was 213,000. So I had 7,000 left over for uh, position management, for exit strategies. I generated 31.55 in cash selling the options. So if we take a look at our initial return, remember our goal was uh, one to two percent. It was right in the middle, one point four eight percent. You know, when you deduct the uh, trading commissions, uh, one point four eight percent. That's an exact number. Now it does meet our goal range of one to two percent, and at that point in time, it allowed me to buy fifteen shares of the Qs at the time. Um, and that, that would annualize out to 180 shares per year or $34,000 per year. Now that's gonna vary. It's gonna vary based on the price of the queues, but I just wanted to give you an idea that particular month, we bought 15 shares of queues. If the price goes down, we're gonna buy more shares. If the price goes up, we're gonna buy less shares, but we are dollar cost averaging, which is a very safe way to, um, to do our trading. And, and you could see at the bottom that we had the cash available uh, for exit strategies. And uh, ultimately, uh, for the next contract month, we can buy even more shares 
uh, if we generated more cash on the stock side as well. So uh, let me also point out that there is another smaller, but yet still an income stream uh, from this strategy, and that's dividends. Uh, the Qs do give dividends, small, but yet you, you do get it, and we'll accept everything as far as income is concerned. And here you could see at the time that I made this screenshot, uh, towards the end of last year, uh, the dividend was 0.81% uh, over the past 12 months. Uh, and uh, the actual dividend distribution at that point in time was 38 cents a share. So in our brokerage account, we could reinvest the dividends or have that cash available the following month after a dividend to uh, purchase uh, more shares of the uh, blue chip companies. So we're generating another income stream uh, through dividend distribution with the Qs. So just you know, and there's four dividends um, a year, and the Qs have been generating dividends uh, since 2003. So it's a pretty reliable source of dividends over a fairly significant period of time. So let's just summarize the pros and cons, because every strategy has its advantages and disadvantages, and don't let anybody tell you different. There's no, no free lunch here, folks. Uh, you know, uh, but in my view that uh, covered call writing advantages far, far outweigh the disadvantages. And we're going to give you the pros and cons specifically of the strategy that I presented uh, this evening. So we're going to start off with the pros. <clears throat> and uh, the, we're going to create a no-cost portfolio of, of large-cap tech companies. No cost in that we're using the cash generated by leveraging the blue chip stocks. So rather than just leaving them in, the, in your uh, brokerage account to grow in, in price, we're going to sell options against them. We're going to leverage them by selling out-of-the-money call options, and we're going to use that to buy the queues. With dollar cost averaging, which is, I'm sure you'll all agree, is a very sound financial way of investing, and we're going to reinvest dividends. Now, on the negative side, and this is generally for covered call writing, share appreciation is capped. So uh, if you bought a stock at 48 and sold a 50 call, and let's say some unexpected good news comes out and it goes to 55, we can only participate in the share appreciation from 48 to 50 because of our contract obligation. Now, <clears throat> that said, there are certain position management techniques uh, where you can actually take advantage of that as well. But as I said, that is part of my material in my books and DVDs, but beyond the scope of this particular uh, webinar. Now, uh, early exercise is rare, uh, but possible. I think it's happened to me maybe four or five times in over two decades of trading options. Uh, and it's only uh, something you would worry about in a taxable account if the uh, securities that you own are of a very low cost basis. And you're afraid that if the shares are in fact sold because of option exercise, that you'll have some negative tax issues. So that would be the, it's rare. It almost never happens, but it can happen. So you have to be aware of the ex-dividend dates. Remember, if that does occur, it'll occur the day prior to the ex-date. And uh, tongue in cheek, uh, disadvantage is that stock prices can go down. Now, if any of you didn't think that was possible, have you lived through the last two weeks, you now know that it is possible. So in essence, when you're doing covered call writing, uh, the risk is not in the selling the option. The risk is actually in owning the shares. And it's uh, less risk than if you didn't sell the option because when we do, we're lowering our cost basis. So just to um, summarize now, we're going to develop a portfolio of large uh, tech companies uh, at no cost or just by selling the options. We're going to sell out-of-the-money call options on blue chip stocks uh, remember that are outperforming the S&P over both time frames to generate a goal of 1% to 2% a month. And the Qs are a great way to have that large cap tech exposure without spending a gazillion dollars to do so. Now, if you did employ position management, which you will and should, uh, just because it's not part of my webinar tonight doesn't mean you shouldn't, uh, your profits will be elevated even higher. So. Uh, position management includes mitigating losses if the price of the stocks go down, and it includes uh, maximizing or enhancing profits 
if the uh, price of the stock goes even higher than the strike price. So before you enter a trade, you have to be prepared for every and any possible situation before you enter the trade. Learn about it so this way you can take action, non-emotional action based on sound fundamental and technical parameters. Okay, I'm gonna grab a drink of water for a second, three seconds, and then we're gonna go on to puts. Okay, now when we sell a put, we're selling someone the right but not the obligation to sell their shares to us at a price that we determine by a date that we determine. Now, an out of the money put is the opposite from an out of the money call. Let me just refresh your memory. When we sold the out of the money $50 call in the preview example, it was higher than the current market value of 48. We paid 48 for the stock and we sold the $50 call option. And I told you that that was out of the money, higher than the current market value of the stock. For puts, it's the opposite. An out of the money put is lower than current market value. So when we're selling cash secured puts to generate income and we sell an out of the money put, the put that we sell is lower than current market value. Now for full disclosure, when I sell puts, I'm selling, I only sell out of the money puts. Uh, there is uh, situations where you might wanna sell an in the money put if you want those shares to put to you very quickly. But generally speaking, for two purposes, generating cash flow, which is the main reason people sell cash secured puts, or to buy a stock at a discount, which I'm gonna talk about tonight, uh, we go out of the money. So let me show you how this works. Let's say stock BCI is trading at 75, right? We sell the out of the money cash secured put strike price 72.50. That's out of the money, it's lower than current market value. And let's assume we get a premium of $2 for this one month expiration. Okay, so that's the hypothetical scenario. Stock is trading at 75, we sell the out of the money 72.50 put, that means we're, we're agreeing to buy the shares for $72.50. They're trading at $75. We get paid $2 for undertaking this obligation, and it's a one-month obligation. Now, the broker is going to require us to put money into our cash account in case that put is exercised. So it has to be in place for a possible future stock transaction, namely for us to buy the shares at $72.50. 100 shares per contract, $7,250. Now, the broker will allow us to apply the put premium to the cash required to secure that put. So instead of $7,250, we're gonna be required to put $7,050 into our cash account. So with covered call writing, we're first buying the shares. When we sell cash secured puts, we are not. We're just putting the cash into the account in case there is a future stock transaction, namely us buying the shares at the price that we agreed to, 72.50, by the date that we agreed to, which was a one month expiration. Okay, so at this point in time, we have undertaken that obligation. Now, the option premium, the $200, is ours to keep no matter what, just like when we sell a covered call. It's ours to keep no matter what happens at the end but we're obligated to buy the shares at 72.50 if the option buyer elects to exercise that option. Well, when would they do that? When would they agree to sell their shares for 72.50? That would be if the price went from 75 to some number lower than 72.50, right? Because why would they sell it, sell it to us for 72.50 if it's trading at market at 75 or 74 or any number higher than 72.50? So it won't happen. So the unexercised return, if, if the shares aren't sold, is $200 profit divided by the cash we had to put into the account, 7050, which represents a 2.8% uh, one month return, annualizing out to 34%. Less trading commissions, which is negligible. Used to be a factor 
uh, when you're buying stocks also, but negligible now. So the first scenario is what we just talked about. It's if the, if the option is not exercised and if the price remains above the 7250 strike price. So how about a 2.8% one month return? Not bad. We'll show you a real life example using the BCI put calculator. I'm also gonna show you how to get a free copy of that as well at the end of this presentation. So the second scenario would be if the price of the stock uh, does move down below the 7250 strike price. Now the cash that we had set aside to secure the put is used to buy the shares at 7250. So what is our actual cost basis? It's really not 7250 because we got two dollars in put premium. Our actual cost basis is 7050. Remember we started out with BCI trading at 75. So once that happens, we've purchased the stock at a cost basis of $70.50. Of $70 we are no longer option sellers at that point in time. We are share owners. Now, as a share owner, what do we do? We own the shares. What, what, what is our plan? Well, we could sell the stock. You know, if let's, let's say that uh, we didn't expect exercise, but it happened, we don't really want to hold the shares, we sell it. Now, if the price of the stock was higher than our cost basis of 70.50, we have a realized capital gain. If it's lower than 70.50, we have a realized capital loss. We could hold the stock for the long term. Now, this is, this is the interesting part that, that I, I hope can make some money for you guys. I know many of you, when you buy stock, will set a limit order. You'll say, you know, I like that company, but, you know, I'm gonna, I'll buy it if it drops to a certain price. So let's say with BCI trading at 75, you say to your broker, you know what? I'll buy 100 shares of BCI if it drops to 71. Here's $7,100 in my cash account. Set a limit order for 71. If it hits that, I want to buy it at 71. So if the price does dip to 71, you, you have your shares at, at your target price. But if it doesn't, remains above 71, you don't have your shares, and that $7,100 you set aside did absolutely nothing for you that month. However, if you sell the 7250 cash secured put, right, and it's exercised, you now own the shares at slightly lower than your target price of 71. And uh, that, that was your target price, and now you can keep it in your long-term buy and hold portfolio. If it doesn't hit, you just got paid 2.8% not to buy the stock. So th those are the two possibilities. Either you own the stock at your target price, or you get paid not to buy the stock. So that's possibility number two, which is a pretty good one. And the final one is you can write a covered call. So you can actually use both strategies Together, you can use a cash secured put to enter the covered call trade. And uh, if the shares aren't uh, put to you, then you just keep generating cash flow by selling the out of the money put. So let's look at the uh, BCI put calculator here. And again, I'll show you how you can get a free copy of the single column basic BCI put calculator. For those of you, by the way, who are premium members, we have expanded versions of all these calculators on the premium member site, both the elite put calculator and the elite covered call calculator. But for those of you who are not, let me show you, I can get a free copy of the basic calculator. Okay, so here we go. Amberella, at the time that I made this screenshot, was trading at 47.75. So we're gonna look at the out of the money for puts is lower than current market value, 45 strike which generated a put premium of $2. Now, let's, uh, let's first take a look. How much cash is the broker gonna ask us to put into the account? Well, if we're agreeing to buy 100 shares at the 45 strike price, that's $4,500. But remember, the broker will allow us to apply the $200 put premium to that. So we're gonna be required to put in $4,300. That's our investment, $4,300. So when we fill, it, fill in the white cells at the top of the spreadsheet, this, the cells at the bottom, the gold cells, will become populated. Now, 
if the price of Amborella does not drop below the 45 strike, in other words, it's unexercised, we will have a one month return of 4.65%. And that's uh, 200 divided, two dollars divided by 43. 200 divided by 4,300, 4.65%. Now there's no additional uh, share appreciation or there's nothing else. All you generate is you put premium. Now let's say the price of Amborella drops from 47.75 to below the 45 strike and it's exercised at 45. So what do we purchase the shares at a cost basis of 43? That represents a discount of 9.95% from the original share price of 47.75. So those are the two things that can happen. Either we're going to purchase the stock at a discount of almost 10%, or we're gonna generate a one month return of 4.65%. Those are the two things that can happen. So if you're incorporating both the uh, selling cash secured puts, and covered call writing into one strategy, we're gonna start off, I call this the PCP, a put call put strategy. Uh, you're gonna start off by selling an out of the money cash secured put. Now, if it's not exercised, use the cash to secure another put. If it's not exercised, do the same thing. If it is exercised, you're buying the stock at a discount and then you write a covered call. Out of the money and normal to bull markets, in the money and bear markets. If it's not exercise, write another covered call. If it is exercised and the shares are sold, we then use that cash to then secure another put. So generate cash, generate cash, generate cash, buy a stock at a discount. Generate cash, generate cash, sell the stock, secure another put. And on and on it goes. So selling cash secured puts can be used as a strategy in and of themselves, or it can be used in conjunction with covered call writing uh, as a multi-tiered option selling strategy. Now here's a, uh, uh, just kind of a hypothetical I made up with even numbers. So the actual numbers that you see like 5%, a little bit higher than they normally would be, but everything worked out evenly. So let me just show you how that works. So let's say uh, a stock is trading here at 2250 and we sell the out of the money lower than uh, cash sec secured put at 20 and we generate a premium of a dollar. Now. If it's unexercised, we have a 5.2% uh, one month return. If it is exercised, we buy the shares at a cost basis of 19. The strike was 20 and we got a dollar premium. So we buy it at 19, which represents a 15% discount from the original price of 22.50. Okay, so now we own the stock at a cost basis of 19. So now we are in the covered call leg of the PCP trade, and we can write a covered call on that. Now, if we sell the out of the money 20 covered call, and let's say we generate a dollar, we're back to our 5.3% return. And if it moves up to the 20 strike, that would be an additional 5.3% one month return. So that's how you would integrate the two strategies, selling out of the money cash secured puts and then writing covered calls. Now, for those, for those of you who are new to option selling, uh, don't start out with both strategies. Start out with covered call writing. It's more intuitive, it's easier to learn and understand. And once you have that in your back pocket, and it won't take that long, for most retail investors that know little or nothing about it, I'd say three to four months uh, to get going on it. And then uh, you can integrate put selling into the strategy. And now you'll have uh, another way, another strategy to continue to generate cash or to buy a stock at a discount. Now I'm gonna show you some of the products. I'm only gonna spend a couple of minutes on this because we're winding down now. And then I'm gonna show you the free resources uh, on our uh, website. And uh, so uh, if you go into our store, which I'll show you in a minute, and you use this promo code LISTIG20, you'll get a 20% discount on all the products ordered at checkout. So remember that LISTIG20 as the promo code. So here are the, uh, the products that will apply to the strategies that we talked about tonight. Now I'm humbled to say that I have the two best selling books on both strategies on Amazon for years. Uh, the covered, uh, complete encyclopedia for covered call writing, the classic edition, uh, I have a volume two as well. 
I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, that's been number one on Amazon since it was published, and we just updated it a, a few months ago. Uh, so that, that's, that book should be read before volume two. And that has been number one on Amazon now since it, its publication. I also have the number one book on Amazon on selling cash secured puts. Our most recent book is a uh, covered call writing alternative strategies, which I co-authored with Barry. I'll give you a close up of that in just a moment. And uh, I'll show you another book shortly as well. All of our DVD programs now are online streaming. So we don't have physical products anymore. You know, you set up a user and password, you have lifetime access to, uh, to access these DVD programs. So uh, we were able to lower the prices significantly since we don't have to create actual physical products and ship them to you. And uh, as there are less and less DVD players being made now, we just had to go along with the technology. Now here's volume two of the complete encyclopedia. You can tell the difference between the two books by the magnifying glass. Uh, and these are 96 journal articles that I published after publication of the classic edition and they were inserted into the corresponding chapters. Uh, they all have educational components to them, uh, real life trades either from my portfolio or members of the blue collar investor. And it's really taking the learning up to a, another level, but the classic edition must be read first. Here's uh, Amazon uh, number one selling book on cash secured puts. There I am in my Plainview home, which I sold, moved to Florida. Um, and so uh, that, that book is, uh, will get you where you need to go as far as selling cash secured puts. Now here's our latest book, um, Covered Call Writing Alternative Strategies. So these are Covered Call Writing-like strategies. At the bottom of the screenshot here, you could see the three strategies that it discusses. First is portfolio overwriting. For those of you who want to write covered calls on your long-term buy and hold portfolio, uh, perhaps stocks that you've owned for a long time at a low cost basis in non-sheltered accounts, you want to avoid tax issues. There's a very, very specific way you should use covered call writing, different from the way I use it for traditional covered call writing. So we go into that strategy known as portfolio overwriting. The second strategy that we cover in the book is the collar strategy. And that's where we add protective puts to put a floor on the trade. So we have the stock, long stock, short call, sell the covered call, and buy long protective put. Now, interestingly, this is the strategy that Bernie Madoff pretended to use all those years uh, when he was ripping off all his investors. Uh, he called it the split strike conversion strategy, but in reality, it was simply the collar. And so the ironic part of that whole deal with Bernie Madoff is that he actually could have made money for his clients had he actually executed trades. In any case, the collar strategy is a more conservative way of doing covered call writing. You're going to make less money, but for some, uh, it may help you sleep better at night. And the third uh, strategy covered in this book is the poor man's covered call, uh, where instead of buying a stock, you buy a long-term option called a leaps option instead of the stock. So you're putting less money into the trade. Uh, in my humble opinion, there is no place else where you're going to find as much information on the poor man's covered call as you will find in this book. Uh, I literally uh, researched this for months and months and months. And uh, by the way, Barry and I have created three calculators for each of these strategies uh, to, to assist in uh, helping you make your uh, investment decisions. So um, this book covers those three, three strategies and also you'll find uh, in the store uh, calculators relating to each one of them. Now, one of the books that you didn't see previously on the screenshot is the book that I'm most proud of, uh, Stock Investing for Students. Uh, once I got somewhat well known out there in the finance industry, I decided to write the book that I wish I had when I was in school or not near retirement. And it's not options, it's general finance. So if you know anybody, uh, children or grandchildren, or if you yourself is not near retirement, you're looking to build up portfolio wealth using sound financial principles like dividend reinvestment, dollar cost averaging, uh, mutual funds versus ETFs, things along those lines. 
Uh, this uh, this is, could be a great book for you. Uh, it was picked up by four universities here in the United States as part of their financial literacy program. I remember to use the promo code LISTIC20 to get you 20% discount, and that'll be good until this Friday, uh, the 13th. So let me show you the free resources now. Um, uh, number one uh, is the Google search tool. So I have written and published over 400 journal articles on option selling. So uh, let's say you want a, a particular topic, let's say technical analysis, just type that in and the articles that I wrote on technical analysis will come up. Number two is a glossary that I wrote for Covered Call Writing. You may want to bookmark that. Uh, number three is where you'll get the calculators. So free resources, including the Elman calculator. You, they'll just ask for your email address, type it in, and then you can download the calculators. And there are a bunch of files also that you can get for free. There's about 10 to 12 different free resources that you can download to your devices from that free link. Um, Number four, Ask Alan videos. Uh, these are email, PowerPoint video responses to uh, member questions. We put about 10 of them for free on the general site, and there's about 170, the entire library, which is available only to our premium members. Uh, number five are additional training videos, which my team um, rotates. Number six is the store where you can find all these products. Uh, Number seven, I think I skipped, uh, number four you see above number four is membership. That's where you can join uh, the premium membership also. Uh, the beginner's corner, uh, you could see number six or in the corner up there on the top right, that gold triangle. Those are two eight video uh, PowerPoint courses, about five to 10 minutes each, one on covered call writing, one on selling cash secured puts. It's like the cliff notes we used to use in college. So there are uh, video, uh, video overviews of the two strategies, and it's free. And you can also download the PowerPoint, so you could find that as well. And number eight doesn't apply to you because uh, that's, our site is available in 80 different languages. And since you all hung out, uh, you must have been understanding what I've been saying. So those are everything available uh, for free on the Blue Collar Investor site. Now, I know many of you are already receiving uh, my free newsletter. I write an article every week on option selling. They all have an educational component to them. They may reflect trades that I've made in my own portfolio or those of members or just topics that I've researched because I've been asked about it. Um, the news, I spend hours a week writing this newsletter. I won't waste your time and it's free. So go to the blog link on our website. Just fill in your name and email and you'll receive the newsletter uh, delivered to your email box 10 a.m. Eastern time every Sunday morning. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we covered uh, developing a portfolio of blue chip stocks to create a free portfolio of large tech companies. We covered uh, selling uh, cash secured puts. We showed you the free resources and products available to take this up to the highest possible levels. Now, our website, the bluecollarinvestor.com for the free resources. Uh, to email me any questions you have, alan at the bluecollarinvestor.com. You can also get in touch with Barry at barry at the bluecollarinvestor.com. We answer all our emails, may not get it the very day that you send it in, but shortly thereafter, we spend a lot of time responding to your email inquiries. So um, that's pretty much it for me. Um, I again want to thank Jim for uh, inviting me uh, to do this webinar and for arranging Plan B with the coronavirus wreaking habit on, on our society now. It's a way of getting you guys the information in a very safe manner, and um, I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you very much, Jim. I want to thank uh, Darius uh, and Barry uh, on my team for uh, recording and answering questions and making all this happen. I couldn't do without you guys, and of course. I want to thank everybody who attended uh, tonight's uh, webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. And most importantly, I hope you make some money from it. So this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. Take care, everybody.